Hello, day one students and my 350 plus gang. Guess what? This class is all about chemical formula. Oh, yes. Now, the big question is what is it that Jamba and Waek they expect us to know as far as chemical formula is concerned? And of course, this is our lesson three. Of ensure that you have run through lesson one and lesson two very, very fast. Lesson one and lesson two, they were all about chemical word symbols. And then we've looked at everything underneath it. In chemical formula, right we're going to look at something lovely you know under chemical symbols i tell you that elements are represented with symbols but what do we now use to represent your chemical formulas when you come to chemical formulas they are no longer elements no we are better words compounds that's why compounds are represented with formula how do you represent elements elements are represented with symbols Compounds are represented with formulas. That's the difference. Elements, symbols. Compounds, formula. Another interesting thing is that the formula of a compound represents one molecule of that compound. Ah. Now, the symbol of an element represents one atom of that element. Symbol represents one atom of that element. But your formula of a compound represent one molecule of the compound can i shock you for example when they say n o n a o h this is your sodium hydroxide is sodium hydroxide an element or a compound of course it's a compound now this formula sodium hydroxide which is a compound of course it is a molecule of this compound so the formula of a compound represents one molecule of that compound two things to hold tight number one when we talk about um, compounds, say compounds are represented with what formulas? How do you represent elements? Elements are represented with symbols. Now, number two, the formula of a compound represents one molecule of that compound. What about for elements? Of course, the symbol of an element represents one atom of that element. That's the difference between the two of them. If you get that very fast with me, I would like you to understand this, that to write the correct formula of any compound in this life please determine two things what are the two things to determine number one is it a binary compound there are rules we apply in getting binary compound and the second thing a compound that contain more than two elements it is no longer a binary compound if you contain two elements alone you are a binary compound if you contain more than two elements, you are not a binary compound. Oh, now look at this very quickly. NaOH. It contains sodium, oxygen, hydrogen. It is not a binary compound. Okay. NaCl. Sodium and chlorine alone. Binary compound. H2SO4. Hydrogen, sulfur, oxygen it is not a binary compound check how many elements there yeah. this guy has three elements i'm not telling you the number of atoms how many elements of course you can see hydrogen you can see sulfur you can see oxygen that's three elements what about your um what about your let me say h2o please how many elements do we have in h2o just two hydrogen and oxygen two right very simple easy and direct now, what is a binary compound? A binary compound is a compound that contains two elements only. What about a compound that contains more than two elements? It is no longer a word binary compound. And the chemical formulas, hence, the way we write the chemical formula of a binary compound is different totally from the way we write for a compound that contains more than two elements. If you get that very fast, let's go and dwell. On what your binary compounds are you good to go yeah, let's go now in your binary compounds there are three things i like you to note first number one please take note that binary compounds are compounds that contain only two elements how many elements only two elements only two elements only that's all what are the bits the complete series of classes right as far as your syllabus is concerned regarding your jam awaek Everything has been covered in details for you in the LearnLift app. And guess what? The sweet part is that you have access to your CBT, right? You have access to your video lessons. You have access to your notes. You have access to your past questions. Everything from the beginning to the end. 
is directly in the lane lift app for you. So all you have to do is just mark down to Play Store or App Store and download the lane lift app where you follow all your classes from the beginning to the end. A quick one before we move, let's get back to class. Enjoy. Another thing is that the name of binary compounds, how do they end? They end with ID. How ID, ID, ID. So in your binary compound, most of them, not all, you always see ID, ending them ID, 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 ID. Can I shock you? Okay, look at a good example. Cashom oxide. Cashom oxide. ID, ID, ID is there. Right? Another one is your hydrogen sulfide. Ait, 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 ait is there. Hydrogen and sulfur alone. Hydrogen sulfide. The question I'm asking yourself, now, for example, cashew mosaic, is it CaO? Or it is your CA2O? Or it is your CaO2? You know, these things, in a way, they are kind of like confusing a bit, but they are very simple, easy, and direct. I'm going to show you. Hydrogen sulfide. Is it HS? That is hydrogen sulfide. Is it H2S? Or it is your HS2? Are you seeing it now? Or is it your H2S2? That's your hydrogen sulfide. Well, I don't know. As we move, I will show you. And then, but just know that how do they end? They end with ID, ID, ID. Another example is your potassium nitrite, ID. And then you have another example, aluminum oxide, ID. So you see, your binary compounds, most of the times, their name end with what? ID. And then we also have your sodium phosphide, ID. But listen, though, it is not all binary compounds. That their name end with ID. Okay, shock me. H2O. What will you call this? Hydrogen oxide. Shit, that's what you're going to call it. This is your water. Are you seeing it now? So, do you hear anything like I did? No. How many elements do binary compounds have? Two elements. Your names will always end with what I did. But now, this is it. What are the rules for writing the formula of your binary compounds? You must know the rules. And the rules are four simple rules. Number one, write out the symbols of the constituent elements. So if they give you like hydrogen sulfide, write out the symbol. What do they have? Hydrogen and sulfur. You have written out their symbols. Rule two says, go ahead and write out their valences. Write out their what? Valences. Very simple. I'm going to show you how you write out their valences. Number three, very fast. Interchange. They are valences. Interchange, they are what? Valences. Interchange, they are what? Valences. And then rule number four, which is the last, divide by any common factor. If there's a common factor, divide it with it. And once you have divided it with the common factor, you are done. Whatever you are going to have, represent the formula of the word binary compound. Can I show you something lovely here? Okay, look at this question. YX theory, they brought this simple question and the question is write the formula of the following compounds write the formula listen there are a lot of jam questions in this topic as we move together a lot of jam questions you are going to be seeing all of them one after the other as we move write the formula of the following compounds the first one say calcium oxide write the formula write um number two write the formula of your hydrogen sulfide write the formula for your potassium nitride aluminum oxide as well as your sodium what phosphide write out the formula of these five of them are you good to go yeah let me show you how the solution is very simple the first one they say calcium oxide how do i write the formula of calcium oxide and calcium oxide is a binary compound right rule one Write out whether the um, element there, calcium and oxygen. You have written that. Rule two, write their valences. Now listen, how do I know valency for your calcium, valency of oxygen? This is it. From your first 20 elements, hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon, come on, sodium, magnesium, Aluminium, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, argon, potassium, calcium. From this, I can get the valences. Now, how do I get the valences? It's very, very simple. The term between valency and oxidation number. Oxidation number has charge. Valency does not have charge. As we move in this series of classes, I'm going to show them to you properly. But please catch this very fast. The valency... This is your group one element, right? This is group one. Your yeah, valency is one. This is group two. Valency is two. Group three. Valency is three. 
group four elements, right? They are oxidation number is usually plus two and plus four. That's the oxidation number plus two or what plus four. So the valency of these guys, valency does not have charge. Valency of group four elements is just two or four. That's the valency there. Now follow me from here. Come and start from behind there. Group eight elements. What's their valency? Zero. That's how we call them group eight or group O elements. Their valency is zero. If I come down here, what is the valency of these guys here? Valency here is one. You know, this is line uh, the minus one is their oxidation number. Oxidation number and valency, their difference is charge. Oxidation number have sign, whether positive or negative. Valency does not have. So the valency of this guy here is one. Valency here is two. Valency here is three. That's all. You know their valencies. If I come down to calcium oxide, this is my calcium. Calcium, what is the valency? Two, right down to here. Oxygen, oxygen, what is the valency of oxygen? Oxygen there is two, I say, write it down, two. So, I've written the elements, I've written the valency two, two. What do you do next? They say interchange their valencies, interchange. When you interchange, what will happen? I'm going to have C, A, two, O, two, right? Can two and two cancel each other? Yes. Two can come and cancel out two. If two cancels out two, what am I going to have? Cashom oxide like this. So the formula of cashom oxide is CaO. Simple. Cashom oxide CaO. Cashom oxide CaO. Does it make sense? You're out of there. If you get this very fast and you are very sure you understand it, look at the second thing that Waek gave us to answer. They say hydrogen sulfide. Of course, write out their elements hydrogen and sulfur. I've only written them down. What is the next thing? What is their valency? Valency of hydrogen is one. Check it out yourself in the periodic table. Do I give it to you? Sulfur. What is the valency? Two. Let them interchange. Sulfur and oxygen are in the same group. C's group C's. Their valency there is two. Hydrogen is in group one. Interchange. When you interchange, what are you going to have here? It's going to give you H2S1. In fact, in S1, you don't need to write that one. So take out that one. What is it going to give you there? Just H2S. So H2S is your hydrogen sulfide. Da, and you're out of there. So you see, very easy and direct. Now, go down to question three. In number three, they gave us potassium nitride. Potassium nitride. Potassium and nitrogen. Where is potassium group one? The valency is one. Where is nitrogen? Nitrogen is in group five. The valency is three. The valency is three. Of course, interchange these guys. If you interchange them, what is your potassium nitride? That's going to give you K3N1. Of course, you're going to take out that one. And what are you going to add there? It's just going to give you nothing but your what? Your K3N. This is your potassium what? Nitride. And you are out of there. Are you seeing it now? Very simple, easy and direct. Look at number four. You will do this alone for me. Number four is aluminum oxide. Aluminum oxide. Somebody says, sir, please do it for me. If I know you, write it first before I show you. Write it first. Aluminum oxide is your what? Aluminum and oxygen. If you fail this, I'll look for you. I will look for you. You go here, why? Aluminum is in group three. So, valency is three. Oxygen is in group six. The valency of oxygen is what? Two, right? Yeah, very simple. So, interchange these guys. If you interchange them, they just swap. What are you going to have? Al2O3. This is your aluminum oxide. Simple. You are out of there. Number five. What is number five? Very quickly. It's your sodium phosphide. Sodium phosphide. Now, write them down. Sodium and phosphorus. I know you are confused. Where is phosphorus? This is it. Hydrogen. Helium. Lithium. Beryllium. Boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon, sodium, magnesium, aluminium, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, argon, potassium, calcium. The valency of these guys here is zero, right? These guys, they are zero. This guy here, what's the valency? One. What's the valency of this guy? Two. What's the valency of these guys here? Three. Simple. So, if you go to your sodium phosphide, of course, sodium, valency of sodium is one. Valency of your, um, of your what? Phosphide, that's phosphorus. It is what? Three. Let them swap. Let them interchange. When they interchange, I'm going to have 
Na3P1. Uh, what is Na3P1 going to give me? Na3 and then P. So your sodium phosphide is Na3P. Hi, Sir Peter. You clear this very quickly with me. That means you are doing well. I told you that when we talk in terms of the formula of any compound, how many ways can we obtain them? It is either they are binary compound and you get it from there, or you get the ones that are compound that contain more than two elements. For binary compounds, how many elements do they contain? Two. How do their name ends? All of them end with what? I, I, D, E. Please, if you understand this, the next class, we're going to look at a compound containing more than two elements. What should I do? I'll see you in that class. Enjoy. Bye-bye. Hope you've enjoyed this class. Guess what? To follow up for more classes, just download the Learn Lift app, whether on Play Store or App Store, and then follow up your classes. You must do extremely well. I'll see you in class. Bye-bye.